Hello and welcome to the show that's all about the restoration of model trains. These models have all been mistreated, worn out, or else just left to rot. My job is to make them look presentable and also to get them working so that these forgotten model trains can once again be enjoyed. But there is a catch. Each repair job does have a time limit and that is decided by the all-knowing Timomatic machine. If the time runs out before the repairs are complete, then the trains will be left to the mercy of the evil scrap man. Welcome back to Salvage or Scrap. Well, here we go again, so let's take a look at this season's remaining violated vehicles, shattered shunters, and savaged steamers. These models are in a serious state of disrepair. Today's locomotive is an early 1980s Hornby Class 37 diesel that cost me £27. So this is a great loco, it's one that I would love to see restored. So let's take a closer look at this and see what I am dealing with. So it's very obvious that this loco is incredibly dirty, so it's not been looked after. It also has just one buffer present across the entire model, which means that realistically I think they're all going to have to be replaced. But I'm pretty sure that with a good clean and those new buffers fitted, the Loco could look perfectly good, so that makes me wonder what's wrong with this thing mechanically. Well, to find out, let's test it for the very first time. <coughs> Right, so that is full power, and there does seem to be some movement in the wheels this time, but clearly that is not normal at full power. You'd normally expect this loco to go much faster than that. So something is very badly wrong mechanically here. In fact, I'm gonna stop it so that we don't burn the thing out. So clearly there is something quite wrong with the mechanism here. Very slow running, not as it's supposed to be. So I think this challenge is going to be more of a mechanically based one, although of course there is a little bit of cosmetic work to do. So let's find out how long have I got for this challenge. time matic if you will. So for the Hornby Class 37, I have 32 minutes. So the big worry about this one is that I don't know what's wrong with it and I won't find out until I take that body off. So my priority is going to be whip the body off, get it cleaned, get it drying and then turn my attention to the mechanism. Hopefully that motor will be salvageable because if it isn't and the loco doesn't work at the end of the challenge, it will be going to the scrap man and that's no good. So please wish me luck, I'm going to go prepare. Hopefully this loco will work again at the end of just 32 minutes. Remember, the rules are that I'm not allowed to shop online for any replacement parts. I can use parts that I already have in my own stores, or I can 3D print brand new ones. But, anything made this way must be printed within the time limit. Okay, I think I've prepared everything I possibly can, so it's time to start. time matic please start that 32 minute timer. And as always, this season so far, I'm going to start by going to see the 3D printer. Hello there, mate. Nice to see you. I would like some buffers, please. Four buffers for the Class 37. While the new buffers are getting started, it's time to remove the loco body and, for the first time, reveal the insides. There goes one of the bogies. Gives me better access, I suppose. It's not the buffer, is it, holding that on? I'm not sure what is holding this body on, I can't get it off. I'm just going to try and lever it out from one end. Okay, okay. Oh, how annoying. Yeah, it's supposed to lever out from one particular end. Okay. Well, I can remember that for when I put this thing back together. Right, so the bogey comes apart like so. 
Should be able to disconnect all of this. You know what, we might as well take the chassis downstairs and give that a bit of a clean as well. So, body, chassis, let's take those down and give them a wash. I've already removed the buffers. This is the much, much better sort of body to clean than last episode, standard four, because obviously there's so little detail on this, there's almost nothing that you can break by accident. Okay, let's get some water on that. That's the worst of it off. I think my heater fan will do the rest. Let's also do the chassis. Quite a quick job on the chassis, I think. This heater is a real godsend. It's been known to dry a soaking engine body in as little as 10 minutes, and that is essential during this challenge. Now, let's find out what is wrong with this loco. How long have we got, Timomatic? Looks like around 27 minutes left. Right, let's remove the chassis from the bogey casing. There we go. Middle wheels have dropped out. Fair enough, no problem. And let's have a look at what we're dealing with here. I'm laughing because I've seen how dirty the motor uh, commutator looks. Every part of this mechanism is seriously grimy. So much so that I'm having to invest much more time than expected into cleaning it up. Cool, this thing is filthy. How does it get like this? I don't understand. So, could that be the reason why this model is not working? Reason? Caked in filth. It could be. Right, let's pull these gears off and I'm going to need a toothbrush to clean these gears with. No time to be careful, so we'll swamp this with the cleaning fluid and let's get this clean. The gears themselves don't actually seem too bad, there's no visible debris on them, so I think that will have to do. 25 minutes still to go, let's clean the chassis itself. Yeah, I'm getting through the cotton buds today, I can tell you, my goodness. Yeah, all of the, the little pegs that hold the gears, those are covered in filth and hair. So I've definitely found several reasons why this model might not work properly. So let's just clean the gears on the driving wheels. Time then to turn my attention to the motor itself. And that starts with a complete disassembly. These are the parts that actually deliver power to the motor. So it's kind of important as you can probably imagine. So there are the springs. They apply pressure to the motor and then the brushes themselves. Are they gonna come out? No, nope, they're not gonna come out. So I'm gonna have to coax them out later when I take the face of this thing off. If the outer mechanism looked dirty, the insides of the motor are something else altogether. I haven't seen one this bad for a long, long time. So the brushes are the parts that actually deliver the power to the motor. So it's important that those are good and clean. And they're not, they're absolutely filthy. Look at that, oh my word, Ugh. Where have these been? Have they been thrown in a bog somewhere? Has this Class 37 been in a bog? That is the question of today. Why is it so filthy? So this is what happens when a loco is just run and run and run for maybe 30 or 40 years and never opened and never serviced. Look at the state of this. My hands, I look like I've been down a mine. Crikey, maybe that's where this loco has been. Maybe it actually operated in a mine somewhere. I don't know. It's just easier to use the power tool to clean the commutator this time. All right, well, on the plus side, it's now no longer caked in what looked like black coal dust. So that's a bonus. And it's now shining up really nicely as I'm taking the last layer of dirt off that. So hopefully that should, I don't know, maybe conduct some electricity now. That would be a real bonus, wouldn't it? The gear is properly stuck to the shaft, which means that's not going to be slipping. That can sometimes cause a loco to run really slow. So it's not that, that's good. Let's now start to reassemble this thing then, shall we? Every part I pick up is completely filthy, including the front motor plate. I really am so impressed that a model like this can get itself into such a bad state and still run. I mean, it's not running now, but clearly it must have taken a long time to get this bad. So these are all clean now. We've got about 19 minutes left, which I don't think seems too bad, actually. Let's put the front of the motor back on. Let's get this thing reconnected. There we are, so we've got power to it. Now let's put those brushes back into position. There goes one, and there goes the second one. That first one has actually worn a little bit unevenly. If I had some time, I would probably try and fix that. 
but uh, I don't, unfortunately. So let's get the springs out of their spring bath. Yep, these things only have a bath once a year, and it's around this time of year. I mean, it, to be honest, everything I touch with these fingers now is going to get filthy again. So how that's how I'm going to be able to handle the body, I don't know. I suppose if there's time, it might be worth investing it in a second hand washing so that I don't destroy the body that I've just taken all that time to clean. Now, a little bit of lube, which I don't think this loco has ever seen. With the motor back together and lubricated, it's time to test it, possibly for the first time in many years. Ready? Wow. What a difference. <laughs> so the motor is now working, as it should. With the motor working, I can now focus my attention on putting the rest of the mechanism back together. So let's get the gears back on, let's get them lubricated, and let's get this thing back together because time is running out. We have 16 minutes and 35 seconds left. Right, so I'll tell you what, let's put a little bit of oil on these shafts just so that we've got the smallest friction possible. All right. Those go on. Let's put a little bit of lubricant on those gears, just using silicon grease. Okay, and then the secondary gears. Okay, that will do, not too much on that. And then the once filthy gear holding piece can go back into position. And these are quite fiddly to fit, but not if you're used to it, I suppose. Right, let's see if the Loco can turn its own wheels now. Yeah, that's going. So while it's doing that, let's clean the wheels so that we can actually get some power on board. Of course, I can't clean the wheels on the other side with that because they are rubber and <laughs> that won't work. Well, the wheels aren't rubber, but it's got rubber traction tires. So obviously you can't be putting the Dremel near those. Now, usually I'd probably want to take the wheels out completely and clean the axles so that they're conducting better. But I just don't think I've got the time for that. So I'm going to just check that they are actually conducting. Let's see. So yeah, the wheels are making a contact, which is good. So we can reassemble that bogey. Now, one thing I always often forget is these wheels, which have to go on before you reassemble the bogey. Otherwise, you've messed yourself up. Like so, that should snap. Didn't hear a snap. Okay, but it is on properly. Okay, no snap. Apologies for the disappointment. So far, I've focused on the driving bogey, but the non-driven one is important as well as it picks up electricity from one of the two rails, so the wheels themselves do need to be clean. Let's cut to the chase and use the Dremel. Okay, so they're looking clean now. I can use the cotton bud. Now that I've seen the thing working, I think we're doing okay and I think I should be able to do this now without any problems. But time is on the tick, I mean we've only got 13 minutes so I think it's really time now to start trying to reassemble this. Okay, chassis, body I will just turn over and we'll come back to that in just a second. So let's put this bogey on here where it goes and this bogey on the front end where it goes. The weight in the middle and somebody, well the previous owner, has handily put some blue tack on there. But there's a problem. The connector that passes power to the motor is corroded and broken, which means if left like this, the loco will not work. With time running short, I'm going to have to improvise. The chassis itself can't be soldered to, so if I find a screw that fits into the chassis, I can solder the wire to that screw and make a new connection. Oh, this is the worst thing to have happen right now. This is a disaster. I had not planned to do this anyway. So that should now be working. Let's have a look. Okay, good. Thankfully, this has worked, which means I can turn my attention to the body. But first, I need to get that crud off my hands. And for the record, my hands were dirty for days after this. Well, my hands are not perfectly clean, but they're better. So let's have a look at this body. Oh, that looks so much better. Look at this, folks. Wow, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So I think we can put it straight back on, actually. Does it have a direction? 
All right, back together. Let's go and visit the 3D printer then and see about those buffers. Have they printed correctly? The buffers have printed correctly, so I need just four of them to put onto the class 37. Okay, so, so the big question is, do they actually fit? And the answer is yes, they fit, but they are going to need some glue, I suspect, because they're quite a loose fit. Okay, so that should be enough for two. And last buffer, there we go. So we've got six minutes left, so let's uh, lounge back for a bit and just enjoy the fact that this one's done. Let's just absolutely double check that everything is working. So all of the wheels that are supposed to pick up are doing so, which is good. Well, they are, sort of. Yeah, there we go. Great, so time matic please stop the clock. There we are at five minutes and 44 seconds. That is the Hornby Class 37 basically fully restored. Yeah, full buffers, nice clean, should be working again. Let's take it back to the workshop and just confirm that. So here is the Hornby Class 37, back in the workshop after just 26 minutes and 16 seconds of repair work. It's just about ready for that all-important final chuffing inspection, but first here's a reminder of how the Loco looked before the repairs were undertaken. The Loco was obviously very, very dirty, which I think made it look a lot worse than it was. It did, however, only have one of four buffers. When tested, the Loco did manage to run, but it was very, very slow and laboured, and definitely not as it was supposed to run. And here is how the Loco looks now after its little operation. As expected, a good clean has really made this Loco look better, and those brand new 3D printed buffers do mean that the Loco is now complete. I'd say this Loco is now pretty much in perfect physical condition, but is it a runner? To find out, let's initiate that final test. <coughs> Oh, there we go. So those wheels were just crawling along before the restoration. Now though, it is running at a decent speed again. You can hear that it sounds healthy and it's really, really going for it. That is such a big difference, running exactly as it was designed to. Fantastic, so that Loco is pretty much now in perfect condition, so I can pronounce it officially salvaged and of course safe from the evil scrap man. <laughs> So with that, let's take a look at the leaderboard for this series, and as you can see, that latest repair comes top of the list, even above the failed dock shunter repair. So that's not bad going. It also means that this locomotive is now fit to return to a model railway. And if you'd like a chance to own this locomotive, it is now listed on eBay, and you can find the link down in the description there. For now though, that is job done, and I will see you next time on Salvage or Scrap.